Boys have spoken in the dressing room, you know what I want. A good, clean fight. Nothing down low, we'll cheer him close. Case of a knockdown, neutral corner here, and the one behind me. Both clear, shake hands now. Man, let's go. In the so we are scheduled for 10 three minute rounds. This is Jason Maloney up against Gerpal Valero. Valero from the Philippines. He comes with a record of 21 wins, 17 losses, and four draws. Jason Maloney. He's undefeated in nine and has been extremely impressive in his professional boxing career to date. This is bout number 10, and he does so here at the Melbourne Park Function Centre in front of plenty of fans. We're here to see both Jason and his brother Andrew a little bit later on. Needs to be noted that uh, Gerpal Valero, but with his 17 losses in his past 25 fights, he's gone 20 wins with 15 knockouts. Um, only the four losses and one draw. He's only been stopped twice in his career, so he's durable. And uh, they're expecting it'll, it'll give Jason a few more rounds, which is what he needs, because he's been putting everyone on ice. Very powerful, super bandweight, Jason Maloney. He is, and he's loading up with that right hand to the body and over the top early in this fight. You mentioned the record of Valero. Well, he went the distance with Tasana Sanpatan, who's a very impressive Thai boxer who's 38-0. He lost that one narrow points decision for the WBC Youth Silver Bantamweight title a couple of years ago. And since then, he's been pretty solid in his boxing career. So it is a good test tonight for Jason Maloney, who, as I mentioned, is having his 10th professional fight and loads up again with a couple of shots there. One over the top and another to the body. There's a bit of a hush over the crowd here at the Melbourne Park Function Centre. They've been enjoying the night so far, but they're certainly here to watch this ascent of the Maloney twins and perhaps a little bit of nerve, seeing if they can measure up to another step up in regards to the quality of their opponents. There's a lot of expectation in Melbourne about these boys, isn't there, Jade? Rightfully so, mate. They've got extremely bright futures. The boys are the future of Australian boxing for mine. I think they're both going to be world champions. Well, that is high praise indeed, and we can see the work from Jason Maloney straight to the body there with a nice right hand, and Valero is just trying to get himself into this fight during the first round. He's vastly more experienced, as we know, than Maloney, but Jason Maloney has all of the skills, and I saw some comments from Brian Butler over the last couple of days saying they're trying to develop all of those skills more and more. He wants to throw them in against southpaws, against awkward fighters and test them out to try and build them and to diversify their talents as much as they can before they head off and take on some of the best in the world once those ratings are attained and once those opportunities do open up. So Jason Maloney, he's looking to work on those skills and improve again tonight. Jason's actually currently rated at number 14 in the world with the WBA. He's, had, he's defended his WBA Oceana title a few times now. Um, so it's it's only a matter of time before he's actually on the key, as you, as you touch on, he's on the cast of fighting for a world title. So they're trying to step him up each fight. I've even just messing around, sparred with Jason a few times in the gym, and the guy hits like a super middleweight. He'd had eight stoppages in a row heading into his most recent bout, which was on the same card, Jade, that you fought on, on the Danny Green undercard at High Sense Arena. And Jeffrey Francisco managed to go the distance on that occasion against Jason Maloney, but it wasn't without going down once and taking all sorts of punishment. So 9-0 and with eight KOs is the record for Jason Maloney as he heads into bout 10 here against Filiros tonight. I would imagine that he'd be very keen to get another stoppage, particularly in front of all these fans here, and as he begins this relationship with Hosking Promotions. He looks a bit shell-shocked, I would have thought, um, Valero here. Yeah, he's not really able to answer Jason with much much at all in the way of offense at the moment. Jason seems far stronger than his opponent.
Ryan Butler's asking Jason Maloney for a few more jabs. Try and bring him on to that right hand rather than getting it out there uninvited. And one thing you do notice about both of the Maloney's is that when their trainer does speak to them from the corner during rounds, they really do take note and they make the adjustments that have been asked of them. And they did have successful amateur careers, obviously. Andrew won a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. Both of them, though, outstanding amateurs. And they've had some good training, some good schooling, and they continue to learn and listen at this stage of their professional boxing careers. So Jason Maloney continuing to do some good work here in round number two. Starting to hang on a little bit there, um, Jerpal, as is he's uh, as Jason's trying to work in close, Jerpal's stepping in and hanging on. He's very keen not to get caught to the body from some of those big shots. Those elbows <laughs> are sticky taped to his ribs at the moment. Rightfully so. Doesn't look like much fun those body shots. Does not one bit. <laughs> oh. And now, Power. Maloney winds up on a few, and Valero was just stuck against the ropes, trying to cover up, but it's very difficult to do so when they're coming from all angles, going to the body, coming straight over the top, coming around the sides, and that was a really good shot. He started to open up a lot more at the end there. He's been very, very composed, measuring his opponent, and... Um, that's the first time we saw Jason really open up with intent at the end of that round. That was uh, it was good. Good action. Was good. Gee, slick. Those would have been some fascinating sparring sessions and a great contrast between the two opponents that they took on there. Gradovich, yeah. a hard-nosed Mexican-Russian, who, of course, scored a couple of victories against Billy Dibb, and Vasil Lomachenko, who may well be the slickest boxer in the entire world. So, oh, without really doubt, Vasil Lomachenko is impressive. He may well be an alien. He's not from this world. He's he's amazing to watch uh, in person. Of course, had an amazing amateur career himself, and has gone to do bewildering things as a professional, and a big fight not too far away as well. So, back to the Melbourne Park Function Centre though, and. First of the Maloney boys in action. This is Jason. And he is going to work against Gerpal Valero from the Philippines. Oh. Interesting moment there because Valero got a good one through. Left hook and he's trying to find it again. See how Jason responds. He immediately was told by the corner that the hand needs to go up. Let's see if he does that. I think he's gathered himself now. I think um, Valero was as shocked as anyone <laughs> that he managed to get that through. He didn't follow it up. He just had a look around to see that it had really happened, I think. Now he follows it up with a few. And some good exchanges and some good moments for Valero in the middle of this round. He, he needed him. He certainly did. He's starting to get himself back into the fight this round. And Jason Maloney just one-twos and steps in with it and throws with good power. And Valero again finds himself air swinging. Nice head movement there by Maloney. And this is where he does not want to be, Valero, because whenever Jason Maloney has seen that opportunity with his opponent against the ropes, he's fired to the body, brought his hands out of the way, and then gone straight down the pipe and around the sides and done all sorts of damage. So Valero would be best advised to try and maintain this sort of ring position. Looks like Jason's got a little mark under the right eye there. Tiny little slit, maybe. 
Really good body shot there from Jason Maloney with the right hand. And that enabled him to bring some over the top and do some further damage to Valero as we head towards the end of another Maloney round. But with some good moments for Valero in the middle of it. Look, he certainly had his moments. That one left hook he landed caught the attention, caught the attention of Jason. But um, he soon gathered himself and um, got back on with the job. Um, I think Jason's going to have to work if he's going to get the stoppage, that's for sure. But um, no, the tide's starting to shift a little bit. He's only been stopped the twice. Having said that, but we've got 10 rounds and everything Jason's done, he's been extremely calculated. We've only seen him open up a few times. Um, but uh, even with picking those shots, just letting one, one, two go here and there has been extremely powerful. And we touched on earlier, very accurate. The body work is always good from both of the Maloney's, but particularly tonight, I think we've seen some really good action from Jason Maloney, working the body with both left and rights. And that's been where he's been able to do the majority of the damage so far. Bit of a clash of heads there. Exchange jabs. A nice parry there before the jab by Jason moved the hand and hit him with his own jab. Good combination. Perhaps the knees of Valero just buckled during that combination from Jason Maloney, but he's quickly back composed. And let's see how Jason Maloney follows this up because he's forced Valero back towards the ropes, throws a right hand to the body and tries to shake himself loose to fire a couple more. There's a body shot. And Valero clings on wisely. You can hear Brian asking for more pressure from Jason. And uh, he's really starting to pour it on here. He's not letting Valero rest at all. He's going to make him work the whole time he's in there. Always on the front foot, Jason. Now that was really slick from Jason Maloney. A few punches in it, but the right to finish off was so fast and so accurate. And his accuracy is impeccable, as we've already mentioned. Let's see what he can do now that he has Valero over here in this neutral corner. Couple of lower shots from Valero. He's asked to bring him up and throws a good body shot of his own as he lunges in to take that foot position Jason looking to load up here in this neutral corner and Valera does not want to be waiting over there Immense pressure that Jason's putting on Valero. Love that. Pull the hand down, nail him to the right. That was great. That is very Vasil Lomachenko right there. No one does it better than Vasil. That's that's the hard thing too when you're um, you, you're fighting the, when you're fighting the imports. Um, a lot of people will give give you flack for um, the boys always fighting imports. There's no one in Australia for these guys to fight. And um, look, they are. They're stepping up every they're stepping up every fight. And it's still only early days. It's their 10th fight in their professional careers for both the Maloney boys. And um, I think that the way they're going about it and the opponents are getting better and better each fight. Um, and so too are the boys. I think their climb has been great so far. So Jason Maloney this is, defending his WBA Oceana Super Bantamweight title against Gurpal Valero from the Philippines. A little bit of argy-bargy in there. And Jason throws a couple of big ones, which miss. Valero really tight in his guard during this round and fires back with some good shots of his own there as Maloney 
tries to get through the yard. Really good body Beautiful shot there place. with the left hand from Jason Maloney. And Valero did not like that one bit, but he survived it, stayed up, and look how closely he is defending that section of the right-hand side of his ribcage as a result. Valero just got warned by referee Jim Bolin there for holding. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he continues to hold because I don't think Jim's going to put up with it. Jason wants to work and Valero's just starting to hang on. He's looking for that spot where he's done a fair bit of damage so far and Valero is mercilessly protecting it. There it is again. Maloney like a boulder rolling downhill, mate. Just picking up momentum as the fight goes along. One thing, one thing's for sure, he will not run out of steam. So there's the point being taken off. Bang. Valero for holding. And that is not going to help Valero. He needs these breaks, and if he's not going to get them, then it opens the door for Maloney to continue to do that damage to the body and over the top as well. Looks fresh enough though, doesn't he, Valero? Considering the shots he's taken, he looks very fresh, mate. Considering that he's taken, well, upwards of 25 body shots, and he's found himself in a really tough fight here. And he's very fit. Is they've, they've come prepared, and uh, I was speaking, I had a chat to all the fighters out the back, including uh, both Filipino boys tonight. They've come here to win. Um, he's very confident before the fight. He's a man of few words, but um, both boys are here to win. They're very, very fit, both of these Maloney's, and the 10 rounds will be absolutely no problem for Jason Maloney. That is if he can't get Gerpal Valero out of there before we do reach that final bell. No problem whatsoever. The boys, I'm lucky enough I get to train with both boys on the running track with Ronnie Picken. Um, done a bit of work with them in the gym over the years as well. And, mate, they leave no stone unturned in their preparation. The boys are extremely fit, extremely professional, and just work so hard. And uh, I'm lucky, I'm privileged, I get the privilege to work with these guys. I'm lucky. Uh, their professionalism is rubbing off on myself. They certainly put in the hard work. They're just brilliant, brilliant trainers. Would you like to see anything different from Jason Maloney? Obviously, he's been really concentrating on those body shots to bring the hands down and possibly looking to finish over the top later in the fight. Do you think he should be working on anything else in particular? Would you like to see... Some as, more aggression, or as far as, as yeah, as far as technically, I think um, everything Jason's doing is is on the money. Um, aggression, um, yeah, look, a bit more aggression would be good, but um, certainly don't throw caution into the wind because, as we've seen, those left hooks that um, his Filipino opponent's been throwing is is very dangerous guy. So he just can't throw caution into the wind. So. I'd like to see him just keep on going along the way as he's picking his shots well and he's just building momentum as the fight goes on. I think he's um, just doing a brilliant job. It'll, it'll, the shots will come. They will come. There was one of them there. Nice right yeah. hand that snuck through the guard. He's holding him still. He just threatened to disqualify him then for hanging on. Yeah, he did too. So that would be a real shame. But... Probably not a surprise if we get later on into the fight. And Valero is looking to save himself from the punishment. Holding seems a decent option. Now it is Jason who finds himself nearer to the ropes. And let's see how he works off there. Up on the toes now as well. Another warning in the back of the head there. Right. 
And Jason's happy to stay at this pace and he throws a few or more of those body shots in the centre of the ring. Gets him through too. And the crowd's starting to get right behind Jason Maloney. They'd like to see him step it up. And perhaps they can sense that Valero is starting to feel the pace and starting to feel the punishment here. Bit of shadow boxing at the end there by Valero. Round seven, this one. Let's see how he comes out, Jason Maloney. And you can see that those arms are buckled right next to the ribs again of Valero as he tries to protect his body from the outset. Jason, Jason definitely wants to get the rounds in. The whole team, they want the rounds, but um, yeah, he'll have stoppage on the mind. The shots there and some different variation from Valero. And he used a looping right hand to get through on a couple of occasions. But Maloney, as he has been wont to do, gets Valero back near the ropes and throws those body shots again. Knowing Jason, I think he'll be disappointed with himself if he can't get him out of there. Loves the finish. Well, if he's to get it, where do you see it coming from? Do you think one of these body shots could take that ultimate toll, or do you think it's going to be something over the top that needs to get him down? Well, as you can see, pretty well anything that Jason throws, if it lands flush, that could be that could be uh, all over. But I think I think it's just going to come from dripping water wearing away at the stone, mate. You, you can't take, you cannot continually take the punishment Jason dishes out for the entire ten rounds. Well, you shouldn't be able to anyway. I don't think it's advisable. No. Brian Butler, quite clearly saying to Jason Maloney, these are good rounds. So Is that left hook again, but from uh, Valero there. Oh, oh that's a good oh. shot. That is a oh, massive left up. hand to he's the body. And Valero is in all sorts of pain. If he can get up from this, it will be incredibly impressive. He tries, he won't be doing it. And that is a stoppage victory with a body shot from Jason Maloney, who improves to 10 and 0 with nine stoppages. An enormous body shot, a big left hand. It's finished it off, and Jason Maloney. Well, you said he's a future world champion. He's certainly a star of right now, and who knows what is in the future for this impressive young man. I felt that body shot. That was extremely hard. There was no getting up from that at all. And time at 2 minutes 55 seconds into round 7. A wicked body shot by Jason Lomas, third one. Took his record of 10 fights, 10 wins. And still the WBA, Oceania, Super, Super Well, he went the distance with Tasana Sanpatan, who's a very impressive Thai boxer, who's 38-0. He lost that one narrow points decision for the WBC Youth Silver Bantamweight title a couple of years ago. And since then, he's been pretty solid in his boxing career. So it is a good test tonight for Jason Maloney, who, as I mentioned, is having his 10th professional fight and loads up again with a couple of shots there. One over the top and another to the body. There's a bit of a hush over the crowd here at the Melbourne Park Function Centre. They've been enjoying the night so far, but they're certainly here to watch this ascent of the Maloney twins. And perhaps a little bit Maloney has all of the skills. And I saw some comments from Brian Butler over the last couple of days saying they're trying to develop all of those skills more and more. He wants to throw them in against southpaws, against awkward fighters, and test them out to try and build them and to diversify their talents as much as they can before they head off and take on some of the best in the world once those ratings are retained and once those opportunities do open up. So Jason Maloney, he's looking 
to work on those skills and improve again tonight. Jason's actually currently rated at number 14 in the world. Bit of nerve, seeing if they can measure up to another step up in regards to the quality of their opponents. There's a lot of expectation in Melbourne about these boys, isn't there, Jade? Rightfully so, mate. They've got extremely bright futures. The boys are the future of Australian boxing for mine. I think they're both going to be world champions. Well, that is high praise indeed. And we can see the work from Jason Maloney straight to the body there with a nice right hand. And Valero is just trying to get himself into this fight during the first round. He's vastly more experienced, as we know, than Maloney. But... Jason of oh, plenty of fans. We're here to see both Jason and his brother Andrew a little bit later on. Needs to be noted that uh, Gerpal Valero, but uh, with his 17 losses in his past 25 fights, he's gone 20 wins with 15 knockouts, um, only the four losses and one draw. He's only been stopped twice in his career, so he's durable. And uh, they're expecting it'll, it'll give Jason a few more rounds, which is what he needs, because he's been putting everyone on ice. Very powerful super bandweight, Jason Maloney. He is, and he's loading up with that right hand to the body and over the top early in this fight. You mentioned the record of Valera. Boys have spoken in the dressing room, you know what I want. A good, clean fight. Nothing down low, watch your in close. Case of a knockdown, neutral corner here, and the one behind me. Both clear. Shake hands now. Man, right the the let's go. In the so we are scheduled for 10 three-minute rounds. This is Jason Maloney up against Gerpal Valero. Valero from the Philippines. He comes with a record of 21 wins, 17 losses and four draws. Jason Maloney is undefeated in nine and has been extremely impressive in his professional boxing career to date. This is bout number 10 and he does so here at the Melbourne Park Function Centre in front.